Kalani Sitake has taken his seat at the press conference podium. Let's go down and hear from the head coach, the Cougars. Well, um, tough game. Um, excited we got the win. Um, give a lot of credit to Utah State. I thought um, Blake Anderson and his staff had the guys ready to play. They did some different things, some things that we weren't expecting, especially on the offensive side. But uh, we, I thought they played really well on defense, too. And, um, you know, we, we could uh, – we definitely can even play better ourselves. We just uh, a lot of um, mistakes and undisciplined play, but uh, just just the little things that we can we can fix. I I didn't like it. I think last week I talked to you guys about us not playing clean, and then uh, the same thing happened again. So that's my job. I demand it from our guys. But uh, some really good things happened um, with competition. So I thought some guys played really well um, tonight, and uh, we'll just keep building on it. But um, a lot of credit to Utah State. I thought they came in with a great game plan. Uh, the players were, were fired up, ready to play this game. And obviously, you know, nothing to lose. And we had we played a little bit tight. I thought they played with, with uh, an attitude of nothing to lose. And we played uh, just an attitude of just trying too hard not to make mistakes and ended up making some. So um, you find a way to get our guys to play more loose and, um, you know, have more fun out there and, and not make so boneheaded mistakes. But that's, that's, that's my job as head coach. So. We'll work on that, but effort was good, and the guy—I thought the guys played really well, made some adjustments um, uh, on on offense and defense, and I thought it worked out well for us. So um, we're, we're excited that we got the win. Obviously, at the end there, um, had some guys just felt like it was good to get some um, backups, some reps, and they obviously scored on us. But it's okay; I'll, I'll trade in the the points for the experience. So, any questions you guys have? What was the difference in the second half? Tie game at halftime. Yeah, made some adjustments. I, I, honestly, the the game plan that they had, they didn't. I didn't think they were going to do as much keep away ball or um, um, the type of runs. It reminded me a lot of what Coastal Carolina does, and um, a lot of great reason. They have. I mean, they played. They played. I thought Cooper did a great job um, running running that offense. You know and. Um, we just couldn't get off the field at certain times. I thought the guys played really hard and, and made plays, but um, but there are times that it's like the the penalty of throwing the shoe. Um, got away with it in Tennessee years ago, and obviously got to teach our guys not to throw the stupid shoe anymore, and um, just give it. Try to teach our guys to play sportsmanship, so give it back to the to the player, and then just keep moving on. But it, it was like just mistakes that extended the drives, and uh, you know I, I like our guys playing. With a lot of energy, but um, can't abandon our, our mindset, and, and we need to make sure that we play with a better, uh, better mind in, in, in the game. And so that's going to be the focus. We have to get that. We have to play better than that, yeah, as far as clean football. Compared with your defense for the guys. Yeah, I mean, we we found, heard, you know found out today that that he wasn't able to go, and and um, I think, I mean, he's a tough kid, plays hard, you know, and and. and uh, Remember him in high school, so he he's he can hurt you with his arm and and with his legs, and so um, I think when the, I don't know if it was that much of a shift, as much as it was on their side changing being more of a, a downhill run team and, uh, and 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 basically not not as a you know, keeping the ball away. I mean I think the first half and and offense didn't help ourselves either because we, we we made some didn't make enough plays, but I think we had. What was it? Was 52 plays on defense, uh, you know, and the time of possession was was crazy and in their favor, and I think on offense, I think we only had maybe a dozen plays. So, uh, you know, we're not going to score a lot of points when you don't have that the opportunities just to get on the field. And we've got to find a way to get the ball back to our our uh, our offense and, and allow them to to do their thing. So, but the adjustments made at halftime, I thought, was really good. We don't know if we could have done that um, during the game in the first half. We, we were on the field quite a bit, and then. There's always quick turnaround. There's a lot of communication that needs to happen uh, on the sideline. We were trying to get that done and, and just didn't feel confident about the scheme and the change up until we got back in at halftime and had the whole team there. What do you kind of attribute to the slow starts defensively the last couple of weeks the most? Um, we give credit to the offenses that we're playing against, but also just find a way to make plays and, and don't make mistakes. You know, this I think the easiest thing would be. Um, playing assignment sound football and make better decisions as far as, you know, I think we got first drive, I think it was 15-yard penalty on Batty, and it was just 
just not smart. I mean, I think he pushed the guy's head into the ground and stuff like that. Because come on, we're way better than that. And so just undisciplined stuff, and uh, just need need defensive players just to buy into what we're doing and play football in between the whistles. And I think if we do that, we will be in better better situation. So I, the uh, the aggression needs to be during the play of the game, not afterwards or not even before. It just has to be when when the when the snap starts and. We're having a bad, yeah, you know, hard time adjusting to that. So um, we'll, we'll be focused on making sure we start better that way. It, it looked like Jerem was favoring his shoulder a little bit after taking that hard late hit late in the third quarter. Is, mm-hmm. is he still okay? Is he? Is yeah, he I'm, sure, I'm sure he's sore, you know, but but he, I think he'll be fine. We luckily we have some extra days to rest, so we'll take advantage of that. We'll, we'll get back together with everybody, but he seems. In good spirits and seems fine. So, I mean, it's just sore. That, that, I thought I thought Utah State defensively did did some really good things. Tried to take away the run and put a lot of pressure on on us and um, kind of got us uh, off our off our, our rhythm and our schedule. You know, right. on, on what we're trying to do as an offense and and then I don't know if we took advantage of, of um, the op- some opportunities. You know, we in the red zone area. So uh, we've got to figure it out. And um, I'm for, I, f- I feel really excited that we got the win, but there's Definitely a lot of a lot of th- improvements to be made, and, and they're they're, they're I, they, I think for me, I, I think I would imagine that they're easy, easy things to fix. Kalani, why did you go back to Jake Oldroyd when he was struggling? Yeah, um, we felt good about about him kicking the ball, but you know, and he made that one, but then uh, it's an uncharacteristic misses. But you know, competition will be on. Thought he kicked off really well. We tried to do an onside kick, and Utah State was ready for it, but I think it. I think it kind of sparked a little bit of energy in the defense. You know, I'm glad we stopped them and forced a field goal. But uh, I, I just I want our team to know that we want to find ways to win. You know, and that's so I I, don't, I wish we'd have got the ball and I wish it would have been execute, executed differently. But you know, when it's all said and done, we're, I like the aggressiveness of the play call and, and willing to just go out there and, and try to win the game instead of just you know and try to do something to, to change the momentum. Beyond Jake, who are the guys that are going to be in that competition? You got Smith, Peter Rooney. Who are, who are some of the guys that are going to be competing for that spot? Going yeah, well, we got we got uh, Justin Smith, and then Cash Peter Rooney can be involved in that too. So, um, could Rico be there? possibly, but he's our best holder, and and I think he's really good at you know at what he does in punting. So we'll we'll see, but um, we got some time to think about it. I, we'll, we still have a lot of belief in Jake. It's just maybe it's just that end zone. I have no idea, you know. But but. Um, um, we'll get it fixed. Uh, no one's harder on himself than he is. So right now he's he's not happy, but I'm trying to get him to be happy. We won the game, and but we still believe in, in his skills. I thought he kicked off really well, you know. So um, we just got to keep building off of it. How would you assess the run game today? What's that? How would you assess the run game today? Uh, not good enough, especially at the beginning. So. Um, yeah, just just uh, I, I thought Utah State did some good things up front to take away take it away, but um, you know just just fumbling the ball in exchange doesn't help you out. We had some some penalties that kind of put us back, you know, five yards to start. So it's just stuff that we can't be doing, and we got ourselves caught in, in uh, a third and long situation. So uh, we're a lot better than that as as a team, um, especially as an offense. I thought. You know, the second half we were able to get some plays, get some yards, and uh, but I'd like to see more points than what we had. Defensively, I was just going to say defensively, you give up almost 400 yards, mm-hmm. but you get three turnovers. So what what do you take away from? I mean, those turnovers were big for you, obviously with the pick six. Yeah. Um, well, I I felt like you know, the yards I'm not really worried about as much as the the getting off the field and extending drives. We didn't help ourselves. We kept shooting ourselves in the foot by making. Boneheaded mistakes, and so uh, we, we got to fix that. That's got to be addressed right away. And I think the players know. And we'll get. Luckily, we get back to meetings and and, and get this stuff graded out for tomorrow. I was going to ask you about Gabe being tar- ejected for targeting. Did, yeah. Did you agree with that call? Well, I didn't see the replay enough, but I, 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 I didn't see him leave his feet or anything like that. I thought he fronted him up, and I, I don't know. They said they hit him with the crown of his head or whatever, but. Um, I thought he. I, I, I thought it wasn't a, a targeting. He actually hit him up and then slung him down. So it wasn't like he left his feet. Or, but I don't know. I'll, I'll look at the uh, at the um, the video and I, th- I think um, we plan 
you know, hopefully they, they make the, they change the decision, but if not, he will miss the first half of the um, of the game in Vegas. Coach, an two question. I know this one just wrapped up, but you know, next Saturday you just alluded to Vegas is a really interesting place for a Notre Dame home game. Um, yeah. And I know the fans have been looking to it, forward to it all year. Did, mm -hmm. Can you already feel a little buzz around that? Um, just just until now, no, we're we're focused on Utah State. We we knew that um, that Utah State would be ready for this game. I mean that. They they even said in a lot of their, their their interviews and things like that that this would be a game that we were, you know, that's the only thing that's scheduled. Not there's nothing in the future right now. So um, we knew that they, they were going to come after us. We just I didn't think I didn't like our response in the first half. I liked it in the second half. So um, we, we've got to play, we have to play better football as a team. And, and but I, at the same time we won the game. So you, I don't want to sit here and say we made all these mistakes. Utah State played really really well. I thought. I thought they played a, a great game. Um, they did some good things, especially after not having their, their quarterback. I thought they adjusted well. Defense played physical football. Um, so you're giving them a lot of credit. But at the same time, you know, I want to just fix the low-hanging fruit problems, the, 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 the mistakes of discipline. So we can get that done. I, I feel better about our team. Governor Rodney mm -hmm. made his season debut tonight. What, what stood out about his performance to you? Yeah, I mean it's just good to have him back on the field. You know, he, he's uh, he's been waiting for a while to, to get this thing going, so I just I just didn't want to believe it until I saw him catch his first pass, and then and that that was nice. It's, we're a better team when when Gunner's playing. Uh, we feel really great about our receiving group, but um, Gunner's back for a reason. He came back this year for a reason, and I'm just glad that he's able to get out there and make plays now. And and um, he it's just to see that that that. That light in his eyes, the excitement of being on the field. This is what he enjoys, and so I think missing out all those games since camp has been been really hard on him. So hopefully he can make some more memories for us next week. I think the plan is just to get everybody involved and, and just get more. So the plan wasn't to go the only eleven or twelve plays and, and not have the ball and not get enough points. So uh, you know the, we we want to score as many points and and have I don't care who catches it, but. It's just nice that Gunner's now an option, right? And, and and really excited about our team right now. We just we're we're, we're happy we got the win. We're gonna fix it, get some extra time of rest, and then um, get after the game next week. So appreciate it, guys. All right. All right. That's Kalani Sitake, BYU players next on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. Postgame coverage of BYU football continues with the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show. The Postgame Coaches Show is brought to you by Larry H. Miller Auto, conveniently located in Provo, Linden, and Orem. Larry H. Auto, driven by you. Let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. It is the Larry H. Miller Cougar Postgame Coaches Show presented by Larry H. Miller Auto, conveniently located in Provo, Linden, and Orem. Larry H. Miller Auto, driven by you. Greg Grubel, Riley Nelson, and the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Now joining us here in the broadcast booth. Kalani, congratulations to you and the boys on a win that gets you to 4-1 and one on the year. Yeah, glad we got the win. Um, you know, I'm proud of the guys, the response. I, I mean, a lot of credit Utah State. I thought they played um, the best we've seen from them all year. Blake know. Anderson just said it's our best game of the year. Yeah, and, 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 and um, we, we knew – Going to this rivalry type of game that, that we would see that, I thought um, Cooper gave them a little bit of uh, something different in, in, in terms of, um, how, you know, running that, type, that style of offense where he's a threat to run now, you know. And uh, it's unfortunate that their, their quarterback, Bonner, got hurt. But, um, you know, I think they have a good system in, in play with, with what they've got going on against us tonight. Um, you know, e even if we would have played uh, cleaner the way I would like to see, that not as many mistakes, I still think um, they, they still brought a lot of energy and, and played their best. And I thought defensively they did a really good job defensively against our offense. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just lo love the way our players hung in there, uh, the fans, the energy that they brought. I mean, just thank you to all the fans that showed up and, and made a lot of noise and, and give us that, that edge. So, um We'll get better. We're fortunate. I I feel really happy that we're sitting here with a, with four wins, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and you can never. I mean, you can never downgrade the wins. I mean, the wins are tough to come. To. Look at college football. There's a lot of 
a lot of tough games and, and upsets out there. And one happened to Utah State a couple of weeks ago when they played against Weber, yep. and you saw it happen to Miami and others. So, um, you know, for us to take the, the their best shot and, and um, to, to respond the way we did in the second half, I was really pleased. How would you describe BYU's first half effort and performance versus second half effort and performance? Well, I thought the effort was good. I, I, I just didn't like the focus as far as uh, – mistakes and the penalties and, and, and allowing them to be on the field longer. Our offense had, I, I mean, I, I, I may be wrong, but I thought that we didn't have hardly any time of possession in the first half. Hard to score a lot of points when you don't have the ball, you know, and, and um, they had a lot of th- third and, and shorts, and, and I, I thought defensively we could do some things differently. But I, I didn't think we were aggressive enough at the line of scrimmage with our D line. And who would have thought that the adjustment was to take a D line run out, out and, and play with more backers. Mm-hmm. But I thought the backers gave us a little bit more freedom to, against what we were seeing from them. A lot of the run game, very similar to what we see from Wake Forest, what they do, and, and even what Coastal Carolina has done. So uh, that, that was a different change up for what we had to prepare for. But in the second half, I thought we did a great job. Coach, first time in, well, since 1972 that BYU has gone four games in a row with uh, BYU offense, gone four games in a row without turning it over. Is that right, Greg? That's right. How does that happen? <laughs> like, yeah. honestly, did, did coaches not care as much about turn? I, I mean, is it is it an emphasis thing? Is it a play design thing? Is it the players? That's That seems incredible. Of all the great teams that have come through this program since 1972, this is the first to play that cleanly four games in a row. Well, I, and I I, um, I give a lot of credit to our coaches, and that's what we, we talk about. I mean, don't watch the way I played because I had great, I had bad ball security. <laughs> My, you know, me too, yeah, coach. So, Let's, let's, but, I, but I know what, what to do differently, and, and um, we talk, to, talk about it often, to take care of the football and take care of football. And, and I, I am very uh, – honestly, I'm lucky that we have a, a, a quarterback that takes that to heart, you know, and, and um, some of the throws that he makes. Some of them were – I mean, I thought they had, they, they had an opportunity to make a pick, but – I want him to be aggressive, but at the same time, I want him to be smart. That, to me, is the biggest thing. Back yeah. when I played and when you played, kind of in the same era, it, those those quarterbacks or those offenses that tried hard not to t- turn the ball over kind of self-neutered them. They neutered themselves, and they weren't making big plays either. Yeah. The, the, this is the magic combination of still being able to get explosive plays down the field but not risk those turnovers. It's, it's yeah, wonderful. That, that's the, And you hit it right on the head as far as um, – aggressive and take risks but i i think it, it, it's a fine line uh for when you can take risks and when you can't and i think a rod and the quarterbacks have got it figured out now so um but but in, in terms of fumbles ball security is always an emphasis um you know it's it's really cool when when the when the we defense gets a interception and in the sidelines talking about their ball security. He's like, hey, ball security is horrible on the, this. And the punch out Micah yeah. had on the quarterback. Yeah, so you, it's, you know, it's down the, in the red zone. Yeah, it's, it's the emphasis of, of that's part of our culture. Keep reminding our guys that the ball doesn't belong. The ball, we say, the ball does not belong to the player throwing it or, or carrying it. It belongs to the program, belongs to the fans. And so with that on my on their mind, I think I don't think it's a – I don't think it's I don't I don't personally I've never seen too much ball security so I want someone to t- to make me say hey that's a little too much ball security you know what I mean so that that's what we're uh that's what we're looking for and then I th- I'm just glad that it's catching on with the boys you coach enough football you'll see enough things and I don't know that you'll ever see a, a quarter of football like this the first quarter ended Utah State had snapped 34 plays you had snapped five plays and you were the team leading fourteen to seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got to pick six on that one. Yeah. yeah, I. Oh man, and 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 I'm looking at the plays at halftime. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's fifty four to nineteen. Yeah, and and they and they kept the ball away from us, you know, and yeah. and, but but we didn't help ourselves on defense with with extending the plays by making mistakes and penalties, um, but uh, we just knew that we once we get in halftime. Uh, we we couldn't make any adjustments really on the sideline either because we were on the field for so long, you yeah. know. So uh, once we made the wholesale change and, and changed up with some scheme stuff, I thought second half was really good, and I thought they did a great. I mean, we put them in a bad spot defensively by going for the onside kick, um, the surprise onside that didn't work out. Credit to Utah State, they made the play, but turned into a field goal. Defense responded, and I thought the the team responded well with the aggression. The aggression, um, and then the the touchdown at the end was was um, you know on our 
on our backup guys. We we just needed them to get reps, and and I hate that they they gave up a touchdown, but it but they responded well to, on the two point conversion. Um, they need that experience. Coach, uh, have a little therapy session with me right now, if you will. I thought that. Gabe Judy Lolly's hit. I mean, I thought it was face mask yeah. to face mask. Was that maybe a little bit of a of a uh, even it out or, or or a makeup call for the hit on their guy, which I also thought was maybe a little bit of a glancing blow, or yeah. or is it really just safety first and foremost? Anyway, t- talk I'll, to me through I'll, that. I'll have to look at it. I, yeah. I mean, I, I he didn't leave his feet and he didn't um, launch or torpedo because yeah, he in fact threw the guy down so right um but i was trying to get answers but at the same time it's like you know what they're, they're obviously not going to change their mind and we're going to appeal it and see what they what they say you know with the, with that's the there, so there is an appeal process that he doesn't have to be hurt he can come in against notre dame yeah, yeah and okay otherwise he'd only be able to play in the second half yeah. you know so um but i thought he responded the right way and it's just like i you know, it's it's uh it's these little things that that we keep talking about the, the going low on the quarterback. When I I thought Jacob Bourne hit him in the hip, but yeah. um, I ought to keep watching. I, I didn't see all the film, so like the replay guy yeah, gets to t- look at it. Tough to ask. You. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I get the positive of that is you know Micah Harper led in tackle. You got these DBs and you played a lot of nickel, even some dime. You had yeah. six DBs out there, but but those dudes you can feel comfortable on those sets because those dudes are willing to come down here, play physical, and contribute in, in the run game or you know in the screen game, making hard physical tackles, mm-hmm. even if you know unfortunately you get a judgment call against Gabe that maybe is questionable. When then, then it's just how you respond to that. I thought I thought um, Maury came in did some good things and the other corners played well. I mean I, I thought um, for the most part played quite a bit in man. You know so the um, uh, they got some plays. Uh, I think it's maybe we were on the wrong leverage with our coverage, but um, a couple times it's hard when you're playing that style where. It looks like a run. They're holding on to the ball a little bit longer, and I kept saying, "Is it looks like illegal man downfield?" But it's yeah. it's it's, it's uh, hard to, to to gauge. And then that. on the outside, the 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 wide receivers get that inside release on you. But yeah. no, I, I thought you guys for the most part. Did. I mean, you you limited explosives, especially in the passing game, pretty much all day. Yeah, the first half, I just wish we can get that back. And then it's just good to have this ready-made adjustment to teams that want to keep play keep away and. And grind the clock and and run the ball. You know, I, Utah State prides himself on on playing fast and and getting as many reps in there. And I felt like um, that would work out in our favor, but obviously we didn't get off the field enough and get the ball back to our offense. All right, closing comments with Kalani coming up. BYU defeats Utah State 38-26 on the new skin BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. 38 Utah State 26 our final score this is the Larry H. Miller Auto Cougar Post Game Coaches Show time for our valuable stat of the game brought to you by Economics Partners whether for tax financial reporting or strategic purposes when your business needs a valuation the right partner is Economics Partners learn more at econpartners.com and I'm going to look at the uh, the fact that BYU got the ground game going in the second half just getting the ball back and I thought you know, opening the second half was a great opportunity for us to go down and score. And then we just knew that once we get in the rhythm and, and things went well, uh, we, 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 we could be in a good spot. I, I hate that we stalled some. We had missed field goal and stalled on the fourth down towards the end. I would like to see us, you know, convert finish. first downs. Yeah, finish yeah. the play. And, and uh, we, we've got to figure some things out in the red zone, definitely on the offensive side and defensively. Um, just got to start faster and play smarter. And that that's... That's going to be the goal for us is to play smart football getting into to this Notre Dame game next week. How concerned are you about uh, about the kicking situation? Jake's won for his last six right now. Yeah, I am concerned because that's, that's a big part of our, you know, our game. And um, I thought he kicked off really well. I mean, even on the onside kick, uh, that was a great kick. Uh, Utah State, had, that player made a good play on it. But we, we've got – we have to figure out, out the, the, the issue with our kicking game. 
and uh, we'll get that done by next week. So all three phases uh, showed out tonight. Do you know who your leading all-purpose yard getter was? Hobbs Nyberg in the return game. Really? He, yeah, yeah, he had 82 in kickoffs, and then he only had one punt return for 12. Uh, and including, I was surprised, uh, normally Coach Lamb or, or, or you, whoever makes the call, but he caught that one four yards in the end zone and mm-hmm. bringing it out to 35. Is that something that maybe we can expect to see or just that you saw on film against Utah State and exploited it? No, I, I think we're starting to trust him a little bit more. I mean, he, he wasn't available earlier in, in the year, and I think he has a good feel for whether there's enough hang time or, or, or not enough hang time for them to get down on coverage. And we trust him. I know Ed trusts him to get to make the right decision. And I thought he did he did a great job. And, and protecting the football is going to be key, too. And him fielding the ball on, on punts and, and kickoff return, we really trust him. Okay, plan for the guys for the weekend here with uh, no game. Yeah, get, get in the weight room tomorrow, um, go to our meetings, um, get some, some running in, and then um, g- give them some time off for a general conference and, and let them heal up, um, allow them to spend some time with their family. But, you know, I think we can get a jump start on, on Notre Dame um, tomorrow as well. I, I know they're, they're, they have a bye, so uh, it's good for us to get this extra rest. But mentally, I think we can get some game planning going and have that uh, done for over the weekend. Is the hope to get uh, Puka Nakua and Chase Roberts fit enough to play in that game by not playing them tonight? Or Yeah, I, I, I believe um, Chase will be ready for next week, and, and, and same thing with Puka. So, uh, you know, they did some pregame stuff and did some stuff in – uh, as far as warming up and all that. And I, I think uh, this extra time will be beneficial for them to get ready for next week, starting Monday. 13 straight nighttime wins and 14 straight nighttime home wins now let's for you. Let's just, <laughs> yeah, let's just, during the day games, just play, pray for an eclipse to happen. <laughs> uh, Kalani, congratulations again uh, on, on the W and uh, almost 60,000 fans on hand tonight to watch it. Yeah, great fans and, and just so much energy and excitement. And I just love the the noise that they create for us and just hope they know how much we love them and appreciate them and, and just looking forward to, to, you know, seeing our fans down in Vegas as well. But uh, we'll, we'll be better for next week and we have to, and, and I know the guys are on top of it and we get to work tomorrow. So that's, that's a good sign for us. Well, we and the fans appreciate you too, Kalani. Thank you for the time. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again next week. Love you guys. Thanks. Okay. Go Cougs. Thanks Kalani. All right. That is Kalani Sitake. Cougar nation now coming up next on the new skin BYU sports network.